<clears throat> Hello, welcome to Celebrate the Arts, brought to you by the Florida Artist Group, also known as FLAG. FLAG is proudly celebrating our 72nd annual exhibition and symposium. My name is Jeffrey Smart Baisden, and it is my great pleasure to introduce session number 16, Do You Really Need a Gallery? With Therese Ferguson, Nadine Saitlin, and Laurie Snow Hine. This presentation is being recorded for later publication and public access. And so we request that you remain muted throughout. Your questions are encouraged, but we ask that you hold them until the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. As a courtesy, please keep your questions succinct and on topic. Now, please welcome Therese Ferguson, Nadine Salen, and Laurie Snow Hine. Mute. Okay, uh, I am Therese Ferguson. I'm in Brevard County in Melbourne, and I am a watercolor artist. Um, I currently own the Highland Art Studios where I display my work and um, also have a small area there where we can teach, which I love teaching. I've done it for over 30 years. Uh, it's a joy to introduce people to watercolors. Um, and as far as what we're talking about today, I've been in several venues over the years, and we're hoping to share a little bit of some of the pros and cons and uh, things to watch out for when you join it. And I think with any decision to go that route, you have to sort of be honest with yourself and think about marketing. Um, you know, if you're wanting to let go to oh, um, like a private gallery or a co-op or something like that, where you have somebody else that's going to do that marketing for you, um, or do you like to do it yourself? Do you like to be around people? Um, and um, so you sort of look at your strengths um, to decide. A lot of times when I've talked to artists um, that are doing that, sometimes, you know, like myself, we started out thinking, you know, this is what I want to do. I want to exhibit my work. I want to be that. Um, but other artists, they get to the point where they've been painting and they've given art to everybody they know. And so now they decide they want to start selling it. And uh, they'll look at galleries or they look at art festivals. And um, so you have to decide, you know, how much time are you willing to put into it? Um, and what is in your area? You're going to have to travel out of state to find a gallery. And so let's talk about a few of them. Um, first of all, your private galleries. You're not going to have... Um, an overhead as if you owned your own gallery, but you are going to have a larger commission. Um, you're going to have to transport work back and forth. And most of the time these galleries are going to want a certain style of work, something that they've looked at you. You're not going to be able to just put anything out there that you want. And um, so minimal time involved, usually just transporting work back and forth. Um, but, if you're working with a gallery that is out of town or even out of state, you've also got to be aware that sometimes these galleries may shut down and they may shut down with your art and you may not get it back. Um, I have to tell you a little bit of a story about an artist that I met one time. They had a cabin up in Maine. And so he found galleries along the way uh, from Florida to Maine and lined up with them. And so every six months they would take a trip and he would take and put new paintings out at the first gallery, pick those up, take them to the second gallery and all the way up there. And uh, he said, then that way they had a trip to Maine twice a year. So, you know, that was sort of interesting. It's sort of a novel idea way to handle it. Um, your other thing is co-op galleries. Co-op galleries can be wonderful if you're not wanting to do a lot of that work yourself. 
um, within a co-op gallery, as long as you've got a good group of professional artists, and that's the key is that they're professional artists, um, you're going to have somebody that will um, be in charge of marketing, somebody that's going to do the publicity, somebody's going to do hanging and, and all the different jobs. Um, and as long as it's a good group of artists and they get along, these work fine. Um, your downside of that is that over time, the personalities in the galleries are going to change. Um, where you may have a strong gallery of artists at one time as they come and go, it can change drastically. Um, but for the most part, the co-op galleries are pretty good as long as they stay professional. Um, a lot of times, um, some of the galleries are just people that want to have some place to sell their work. And that's fine too, if that's what you want. Um, there's also the frame shop galleries. Um, my experiences with these is that, yeah, I had um, paintings that sold, but every single time they would come back to me and say, would you take the price of the painting down? They want to buy a different frame. And so it took just a little while till I wised up and I thought, okay, this is the reason they want you to show in their shop um, because that's a way that they could get extra money from selling them new frames. So I sort of crossed that one off of my list. Um, a lot of people starting out, there's gift stores around that will hang artist work. And there again, the commission in these places, um, your private galleries are usually higher. Uh, Co-op gallery is going to be a little bit less because you're going to have to work and hold jobs. Um, but for somebody just starting out, that's a great outlet for them to get their feet wet. Um, and if you want to go the route, which is, of course, the one that I like the best is having your own uh, gallery. You can set your own hours. Um, you don't have to ship artwork anywhere. Um, what you make and what you do, it's up to how much time and effort you're going to put into it. And uh, so there, you know, you have more control over it. Um, and what you have to also realize with that in slower times, which, you know, we've all experienced this slow time, um, you've got to have the resources to cover it. And with all of these, you've also got the opportunities to do the outside art festivals. Um, there's also national shows in the different mediums. There are um, the online shows. So there's many, many outlets out there that you could explore, as well as join the Instagram, the Facebook. Um, and with anything, you're going to, I think probably the biggest thing, you're going to have expenses with all of them. You know, with some of them, you've got high commission fees, some of them lower commission fees. Um, if you're in a private gallery out of town, you've got those transportation fees of traveling back and forth to deliver artwork. Uh, with the uh, national shows, you've got shipping expenses. Uh, there was one time I was so, so sh surprised. I had to ship a painting to Kentucky and the transportation for that painting back and forth was like 300 and some dollars, uh, which was a, a big wake up call to only enter small paintings if you're going to have to ship them. Um, so with the um, having your own gallery, then you can still do all of that extra stuff. Um, but you can set your own time and how much you want to put into it. Um, we had um, one guy here in town that his work was, I mean, just really way, way out there and was always complaining that he couldn't sell here. And we talked one day and I told him, I said, well, you know, part of it is you've got to find your market. Uh, your market may not be in the town that you live in. Um, you may not have the galleries here. And so he started marketing into bigger city districts and he started doing much better. Um, so, you know, a little private gallery in the town that you own is fine, but if it's not a place that your artwork is going to sell, um, or maybe the style even. Um, we have a 
pretty conservative area here in Brevard County. And uh, sometimes certain styles of artwork don't sell as well as they would in a, a bigger city venue type thing. So, um, and I guess that's pretty much what I've got to offer for all this. I know I'm ending a little bit short, um, but we're pretty much to the end of it here. So um, Nancy, if you want to go ahead and pass it on to. <laughs> okay, well, thank one. you, Teresa. Teresa, I appreciate you doing that. And we'll, we'll go on next to Nadine. Nadine Slate, Saitman, okay. Nadine, you're muted. Nadine, are you speaking? If so, we don't hear you. That's a Nancy. Oh, there we go. We can hear you now, Nadine. I'm sorry. I just changed from the pad to the computer, and one you touch screen, and one you don't touch screen. So I, I'm with you now. OK, um, good. <laughs> <laughs> that could be a disaster if I couldn't get back on. Um, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. Um, I am now in Boca full time. Uh, I say that because we recently permanently relocated here. We've been living here though part time for over 36 years. And part of the reason I'm familiar with the Florida scene is when I retired from education, uh, I was an administrator, a teacher, graphic designer. I designed educational materials, both content and, and form. Um, we spent more and more time here. And I said, this is my time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what I was trained to do, what I love to do. I'm going to paint, I'm going to make art. Um, I went down the traditional roads as many of you did, thought I should have a gallery, got a Chicago gallery, had a presence there on the street for about 10 years and they never sold anything. And I was so afraid of letting go of that because of the concept that you absolutely need a gallery. So I'm living proof that you don't need a gallery. Um, I had to take stock along the way of what was I going to do as an artist? I mean, I knew I was creative. I knew I was spending time painting, but what were my personal goals? If it wasn't to be in a gallery or sell through a gallery, what were some of the alternatives that fit into what I was doing? The most important thing to me uh, after listening to everybody and finding this was my way was networking. I used professional organizations, which I still do today, such as FLAG, uh, be in their shows, at least if it, as Therese said, it was reasonable to ship to, uh, there's awards in those, there's recognition in those, and there is meeting fellow artists and networking. So that was really important. The second thing I had to do was really determine what were my personal goals. If I wasn't going to be in museums and I wasn't doing museum art, where did I want to be? And I had determined I wanted to be in people's homes. I wanted people to own my artwork and have it as part of their, their lives. I'm basically an experimenter. I use lots of different materials, although I take heed with everybody who cautions you about not trying to show too many of your styles in the same show or same venue. Uh, about five years ago, I had been working on assemblages using the gourd. And in my early training, I was a potter. And I had always loved the third dimensional form. And as I started wrapping and making objects out of cords, what I decided to do was to use it as my canvas. And it's a pretty complicated, for me, a pretty complicated uh, process because you take this raw material, you open it, you clean it, you varnish it, and then you prepare the outside surface like a canvas. Now, I really understand I am not the inventor of using the gourd as an art object. 
uh, you can go into art shows and see wonderful, wonderful gourds. You can see them online on, on Etsy and, and many other places. But my concept, which made it unique to me, was that it is a third dimensional painting. So as you turn and you rotate any of my vessels, the painting continues. It becomes variations of themes of the work that I'm doing. Um, I feel very fortunate. These have been well received. I did not give up on galleries completely. I entered a, um, a crafts gallery. I'm now represented at the uh, Florida St. Petersburg craft, Arts Craft Gallery. But the, the place that I have found the most interesting and where I think I thought a little bit more out of the box, I'm on a site called Artful Home. Um, somebody said to me, uh, Nadine, take a look at Artful Home. There's some really nice stuff on there. And I opened up the site and I went, I would purchase things on this site. Uh, that glass was nice, the jewelry was nice, a uh, lot, of, lot of glass work, a lot of ceramic work, but nobody, nobody doing boards. So I investigated the site. It is an online site only. Uh, there is an uh, uh, application fee. It's high end, it's connected to important cra uh, crafts, arts councils. And um, I have been on the site since 2020. And since that time, over those two years and a half, I've sold 24 of my vessels, which is truly amazing to me. Um, it's Again, thinking a, little, thinking a little bit out of the box, where does my work belong? And stylistically, which I would say is the most important thing I can say to anybody, is how you position yourself on any site. My, my things fit comfortably, they're unique, and they also give me a price point, which I think is, is satisfactory to what I can get. But I haven't given up the idea of the vessel as a fine art object, even though I'm in a gallery and I'm on an online site. And as many of my flag people know, I occasionally enter these into our flag shows and have won a prize on them. So I feel like I'm straddling two worlds. I'm straddling the world of fine arts and the world of crafts. Um, this is the other site I'm on and it's, a, it's a, also a cautionary tale. This site, uh, found me. And again, I credit all of those sites that I'm on that I have a web page on. I ask them which one, they never tell you where they found you, but they found me. That's the important thing. This is an organization which produces handbags, pillows, uh, scarves, leggings, sweatshirts, placemats, covering for beds, uh, you name it. What they do is they contact an artist and ask them if you're interested in showing your imagery on the site. And I agreed to it. I realized at the time, and again, a cautionary tale, it's, they give you very little for doing this, but you do no manufacturing whatsoever. They send you it, all the templates that are available. And then what you do is you place your artwork on the template. You don't see the final product until you order it for yourself. So I have been known to say I'm their biggest customer because um, I like to see the things that I put on the site and what, and what they look like. I want to see the quality of the manufacturing. Upside costs me nothing. Downside, oh, by the way, I don't you I have never used a whole painting on anything. These are excerpts of things that I have done. So I don't feel like I'm competing with my fine artwork. And I feel very comfortable and wear much of the stuff that I, that I do make. Um, the pay to the artist is only 10% of the sale. Most of this uh, stuff, objects, um, you can find online. You have no control when they put them on sale. Uh, you give a suggested price, they price it. 
If I buy it, I do get a wholesale price. They will charge you for putting it on a model, such as the one you see there. You have to pay a charge for basically marketing. They take care of getting the stuff to you, but you are responsible for getting the customers. And I decided after I went on the site that it wasn't a direction. I wanted to go in personally. I wasn't going to pay for huge inventories and sit in art fairs with the inventory or sell them to, uh, uh, to people in a fashion show or any of the number of venues I could have done this with. So I leave it on the site because I think it's interesting. Occasionally I change things on the site. And as I said, I and my friends are probably the biggest customers of the things that I make on that particular site. The other opportunity that I've been exploring, and in fact, I just got a, a, an email back is from the Boca Museum. My vessels are going under, not under consideration. He's going to place some vessels into the Boca Museum store. Um, and again, our biggest discussion there is price point because they know their customer and they know how much customers are willing to pay. So that's another place that I have done two other museum stores. This will be my third and we'll see how that goes forward. I, I put this together because there's so many places you can go and look and you feel free to take a screenshot of this. You know, this is a punch list that you, that you will come across no matter where you go. Does it fit on the site? How many people are doing the same thing you are on the site? Are they gonna find you on the site? Very important. It's up to you to have the mechanical expertise to produce your work in photography. And that means sizing things and, and having the right background and the right setting for what it is that you're doing. Is there an application fee on the site? Uh, I know others have spoken to this. The Artful Home is a, a, a one-time consideration fee. Once you're accepted that, that fee, you do not pay a fee again. You are one of their artists. Do you set the price? Do they set the price? Uh, mostly these sites double the price. They just say, if, if you want 400, it's gonna go on sale for 800. Uh, in the case of Artful Home, they handle all the shipping and all the insurance. My only obligation is to package it and package it the way they want it. And then they send me a UPS label. They do an amazing amount of marketing. I have nothing to do with the marketing, the internet ads. In fact, I'll be playing a game on my computer and all of a sudden I'll see an ad for my work and I just laugh because I just think that's wonderful because it's like it has a life without me. And they do special things for their artists. Um, and those are the opportunities they can offer you. Uh, they take care of the billing, the taxes. Uh, my only obligation is to ship the work. Downsize, I sign a contract that says I will not contact their customers. And that is the way they operate. And I obviously abide by them, but I know that my work is sold all over the United States. So I have a, tr I have a tremendous reach I would not have had without them. Mm -hmm. And I never, when I started out doing this, even working on my gourds, that I would be doing it online in this way. So it's really looking at different directions, thinking, thinking outside the box and uh, going forward with it, okay? Very good, Nadine. Thank, Thank you so good. much. Thank you so much, really. Good information. And um, Lori, Lori Snow Hine is next. So we'll go to her. Well, hi there. I have been an artist since I was a little kid. And I had my first gallery in my late teens, early 20s. It was a co-op gallery in Lake Worth. We, uh, about 10 artists got together. We worked on an instructor named Graham Engels, who was a retired illustrator. And he took his favorite uh, pupils and put us in a little shop in downtown Lake Worth. And 
Uh, we all did portraits and that was about a two or three year experience and it was a very good experience. It wasn't what we're, we didn't make a lot of money. We didn't sell a lot of portraits, but we were able to um, create uh, an awareness of us as, as a group of artists. Following that, I also, uh, I was uh, looking for more portrait work and I took a portfolio of my photographs, walked into a uh, gallery that was a photographer shop in um, Palm Beach. It was right there on County Road. And I introduced myself and I actually brought a couple of portraits with me and uh, wanted to know if he would like to work with an artist that could do portraits of some of the people that he took photographs of. We worked out a very nice arrangement. He actually uh, invited me to take his whole front studio, all the walls in his front studio, told me I could work in that studio space and um, I could put all my paintings up. And I did that for about four years. It was delightful. I ended up meeting a, a lot of people in the Palm Beach area. I did get portrait work and other type of work. And the nice part is some of the shops in Palm Beach would come by, notice the work and want to put some of our my, my work in their shop too. I took a partner in when I was there and the two of us had a lot of fun doing parties in Palm Beach because of the shop and shop they found us and people would come and say we do parties for us and we'd actually show our work at the party. So that was a whole nother type of gallery of a different sort. Then after I got uh, married and started having kids, I really didn't do too much for quite a while. I did a lot of portraits still and paintings. I didn't do too much as far as trying to earn money. And I left that up to my husband and I just did art for fun. And after I turned 40, I had numbers, child number six and he was no longer uh, working. And we went for about six, seven months without him working. And I realized that I had to go to work. And so uh, the only thing I knew how to do was art. And I did start with my portraits again, because that's what I knew best. I'd been trained at from, from the age of actually 12 years old with Graham Engels. And I, I sent out postcards and uh, tried to get my own work by, uh, uh, by doing things with magazines. But um, that happened to lead to a situation where my portraits got picked up by a licensing company. And when they got picked up by a licensing company, I started doing illustrations of children doing things and animals doing things. And uh, that just continued to evolve to where I found myself that I wanted to do um, an art show to get rid of some of the prints and some of the all the paintings I was creating for this licensing company. And at the art show, a gallery approached me and asked me to join their gallery. It was in, the, it was in Fort, um, Fort Myers. It was called the Moho Gallery. They actually bought some of my paintings outright, put them in the gallery, came back and asked me to display some. So it was a nice situation. They actually bought some of the paintings and resold them. And I was also able to put some paintings up and that went on for a while till that st store changed hands. And then I went with another little gallery in the Fort Myers area, uh, actually Bonita Springs area too. And that worked out very nicely. The uh, particular owner of that shop was very enthusiastic about my artwork and did a good job of selling it and promoting me. Got a lot of commissions, but you know, economy changes and things change and that shop closed. And we ended up opening a shop, uh, the same, the woman who was running the shop for somebody else actually started her own gallery. And that was in Naples, right in, on Fifth, uh, off of Fifth Avenue in, um, in Naples. And that too was a good gallery for the first year or two. She had a beautiful location. Um, it was a situation where she should take a lot more artists in. And as she took more artists in, I found that a lot of my work was being kept in the back room and that the work I'd take her my best paintings and she'd show two of them perhaps, but the other five or six would be in the back room. And by the end of the year, I really, I was selling, but not enough to make a living. And I remember I was still doing art shows. So I eliminated my ability to do art shows in the Naples area. I was still able to do them in Bonita Springs. So I finally decided that wasn't really working out even though I liked the commissions, they wanted to limit me more in where I could show and what I could do. So um, that put me back just in the show circuit. And in the art show circuit, art festivals, I was doing them all the way from uh, Fort Lauderdale, all the way up to uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, and, and the uh, Chicago State Street Show with the art festivals. And I'd meet people along the way. And uh, that's how I got a situation where I uh, got a pretty good email list because I would always collect names. And that's one thing I want to recommend artists do is is always build an email list. Or back then when I first started, it wasn't an email list, it was a mail list. I would uh, mail my, my uh, 
my invitations are my different things that I want to show people. Now today, the internet has made life so much easier. I did some um, uh, uh, also shows with frame shops that like the previous presenters mentioned, uh, worked out okay. I sold paintings and they sold frames and we were both happy, but never enough to really live on. Uh, I did some uh, shows where I put my art in um, coffee shops and restaurants. That did not work out too good for me. I find people that go in coffee shop and restaurants usually want to uh, eat and they want other things going on. They don't pay a whole lot of attention to the art. I do have paintings right now in a local Jupiter restaurant, uh, squared, uh, the um, hogfish, snack, hogfish and, I, and I do well there as far as I get good referrals. Uh, they're, they're, they show a lot of my work. And um, I don't sell off the walls. I actually just let them purchase my art at cost for reproductions. And then they refer people to me. And I've actually got a referral this past weekend when I was at Artie Girl. So, so that kind of worked too. But, and that was probably my best experience. The two, uh, two other shops, a gift shop, a coffee shop that I showed in back when I was in my late 20s, early in my 30s. Um, those shops closed down and took my paintings. And it's funny because I actually walked in a, into a home about mm, two years ago to show some art and there was one of my paintings that had been stolen. <laughs> they didn't steal it, They'd been, it's been sold to them. So I, I've had, I have had art stolen and I, I, so I don't, I, won't, I don't put things in restaurants anymore or, or small little uh, galleries, uh, like uh, gift shops don't work, didn't work too good for me. So I don't do that. And I find that my best uh, show gallery is my gallery I do at art shows. So what I've done, I've done a little presentation and I'm gonna tell you about art shows and home shows because both of those have worked out real good for me. That's a little different avenue than some people go. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen for a minute, we can come back to some of these other pictures that I paint. And I'm gonna share my screen and do a little presentation of, that's not it, let's see if I can see it here. There it is, I think that's it, Keynote Home Galleries. And uh, I'm gonna start at the top there. So how do you run a home studio gallery? Uh, how do you work an art show? And I'm not gonna go into a lot of depth, but I'm gonna go over some of the, the details. So the most important thing for any artist, whether you have any kind of gallery, is to get an email list going and to uh, be able to have somebody that you know you can contact. The beauty about having your own home show or an art festival is that you get to know your client. And oh my goodness, I love my clients. I love my collectors. I have so much fun getting to know them, spending time with them, sometimes traveling with them. I've been invited to spend the night with them. So oftentimes when I'm at shows and, and we, we both enjoy each other's company, it saves me renting a hotel room. So, uh, but not only that, uh, it's just so wonderful to spend time with them. So I love getting to know my clients. So this, is, this slide shows two cards that I made up over 10 years ago, I guess, or eight years ago. Uh, the one on the left is a postcard that I mailed out to clients to let them know I was having a home show. At that time, I also mailed actually uh, invitations in the mail to, uh, to my, my collectors. On the right is it's an open studio today. It's a little sign I put out by my by my road coming into my house. And I gave I had several signs, but this is just one and showed people how to get to my show. So my neighborhood was aware that I was doing a show too. You never know who else might come into it. Um, Laurie, could you could you enlarge your screen so I think I can. Thank you. I, I appreciate being reminded of that. So I want to see what so you know just a minute. I, the word I, play. I, I'm looking for play. Uh, the cursor hmm. is just scrolling over it. <laughs> I've got mute, stop video, participants, zoom, so I right chat, there. Me. You you missed it. You, <laughs> you're just to the left of your chat. Are your text or I'll go to the chat? Go to no, chat. I got you. I go out. So, go, so, go, so go, I, go. No, I no, just, no, 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 no. Go back up to the top. Okay. okay. There to your go go the other opposite direction. And then you'll play. hit oh, there you go. Play. Okay, there you go. So it's a good deal. Thank you so much for helping with that answer. Okay. So anyway, uh, you're using a, nail, a, a newsletter and a mail list is so important no matter what. And what I didn't, I don't like about an art gallery. Now I can't get this thing to go. So I get that to go away. What I don't like about an art gallery is the fact that you don't get to know your client. Very rarely do you meet your client unless the client is clever enough to decide that they're going to 
call you up and look you up on the internet and, and find out who you are. And I like, I, like again, I said earlier, I really like my getting on my clients. I'm having trouble getting this screen off. I can't find my cursor. See if I can do that. Not doing good. Um, let me go back. I'm just going to have to go with this on the front. I know kind of what I've said. So anyway, th this is my, I, what I really like is getting to my client. So this is my one of my first home shows on the right. I don't have a home show going on right now. This is my studio on my left. So the one that looks a little messy with things on the floor is what my own studio looks like. From time to time, I just brought a bunch of paintings home from an art show. They're sitting there to be varnished because some of them sold. And I've got a commission there in the background. On the right is what I set up back when I first did my first home show and I had paintings uh, pretty much everywhere as I had product design showing up. I had uh, big prints when I, I actually was printing my own work at the time. I had my own Epson printer. I could print as large as possible. And I put those out on the table as people came into the house. They could actually order what they wanted. I'd print it out for them. They could see the process being done. And I had my graphic designer there helping me do that. So that, that was a a very convenient situation. And to my surprise, I did some really good sales. But the nice part about that too is you can actually take your people, let's go back. You can take your people through your whole whole house, which my whole house is a gallery. Every room in my house is a gallery. Every, uh, the living room, the dining room. And I would actually tell the stories behind each collection, why I was painting it and what I found interesting. Now to take this a step further, I converted my garage. I painted the walls in my garage gray. This is today, this is not set up for a show, but just to show you, I still use it for my storage. Uh, this, is my, this is my garage, I have a, a two car garage. I have two two car garages, so I have four walls I can display on. I have little screws in the wall all the way down like a pegboard set up where I can actually easily hang the paintings without even hanging them on the wire. It just hangs on the back of the, of the uh, water from the frame. And I would set this up very nicely, put my show panels on the back to hide any clutter in my garage. And it makes a great place for people to be able to show a lot of extra work. And this way things aren't sitting in closets or, or you know, being in storage. The, my storage, I can display my work anytime, which works out really nice. Then I also use every space in my house I can possibly use. This is my front walk-in area on the left. It shows my garden in, in, in the distance, uh, my patio, and I've got paintings displayed here. I set these up today. Some, uh, some stay year round because they're jaclays and they don't get hurt by the, by the weather. And I can show them to people when just new guests come. And uh, it makes a really nice easy, easel. Sometimes if you don't have, you don't want to put holes in your walls, I put screws on my walls and hang a painting and usually keep a painting there so it doesn't bother me, but otherwise I have easels that I can set up. And on the right is my garage. Now I have actually a space on this garage where I put five paintings on one side and five on the other because my house and my garage are separated, a nice patio step in between, but it made a really nice place to hang some really huge paintings. Again, I just put these up today to show you how I did it. When I actually do the show, it is um, much nicer the way things look. I use the hallways in my house. The hallway is a collection of my portrait art. And so this is my children. And I, I take people, when I bring them into my house, I take them through the house. I introduce them to my portraits and my different children and let them see how I've used them for illustrations and different books that they've been in. I show the collection of my books. It is a wonderful, wonderful way to get to know your client and for your client to get to know you. It's the stories about you. It's getting, it's how well they know you that makes that connection that makes them want to buy your art and have your art because they, they know who you are. And that's what I was missing when I did gallery work. I'm not saying we don't want galleries because galleries are very important. They do give us credibility. They do uh, make people, particularly on your resume, as they realize that you've been in a certain gallery and you've had galleries. They know that you're a serious artist, that collectors want that. But having my own gallery for my portraits to invite people over when they're interested in a portrait, it's kind of nice not to have to go down, get in my car and drive onto a gallery to show them one or two portraits. I can show them a large collection of my family portraits that I enjoy because they're my kids and they can see the stories that they tell about my children, how precious they are. And they realize that of all the things they can buy in their life, there's nothing more beautiful than a portrait of a child that can be there for generations that can grow up to be somebody's grandma or great grandpa someday. So I, I love having that collection in my house. Um, I have, when I do my open house, I can do it private 
or I can do just an open I, open house day. So usually my weekends, I have an open house where anybody can come that I've invited. I don't make them take a time. I say I set the hours like from 10 to four. And then maybe at nine o'clock, I'll have a private showing or at four o'clock in the afternoon, I'll have a private showing. And I'll take, so I'll take time with different clients during the weekdays where I have my show up. I actually set a private showing all week long. They can come whenever time is good for them. I make them feel special. I like them to know that they're important to me, that what they're looking for is important to me. Uh, my weekends, I do well, grab snacks and drinks and I make people hang around and stay comfortable and enjoy the time that they're in my house and learning about me as an artist. I uh, encourage photos with my clients. When they buy a painting, I take a photo and I make sure they have it to keep too because it helps them with their uh, collection to uh, verif verify their collection in the future. If they have photographs with the artist, then that makes their, their painting more easy to sell in the future, I'm talking decades away. Uh, I also have a book that I give to every a big collector of my work. It's a photo book that has over 200 images and it usually has their image in it too. And it's a beautiful book. It's a, it's a coffee table book. It would cost, it costs about $350 regular retail. And that gives them a little added uh, thing to have. And oftentimes they go home, look through the book and order some more paintings. So it works out really nice. Uh, sometimes I give away some of my greeting cards or other things that I have or extra prints to people that come in uh, just to let them know how important they are to me that it's not all about me selling to them but I have a lot of inventory of different things and I like to share that inventory. I make sure I walk them through the house and tell the stories because the stories are important and they really and they really are stories and they're wonderful memories for me. Uh, I take I talk about the different collections and why I do the different collections and make it very personal. I show, like I said, I show my portfolios and I also show them my, if they want to do a portrait, I show them my portraits, but I also have portfolios of my portraits. The most important thing you can do with a client is ask questions, get to know them, uh, know what they want, what they're looking for. So that's just what a gallery representative would do. So I'm doing the same thing the gallery representative would do, but they love it because they're actually talking straight to the artist. You should have somewhere posted a bio, an artist statement, a list of accomplishments. Same as a gallery you want to show, uh, show you off, you want to show you off and you want to show what you've done. Now, I was so busy just making a living and scrambling to, to pay bills for the past 30 years that it wasn't until uh, 2005 that I decided to uh, do actually not look for the portraits. I still do them. I just did a couple of portrait commissions, but I started wanting to do uh, re a residual income and I wanted to do Florida. And so when I set that goal, I started painting everything Florida. And so I have collections and that's, that's an imp important thing so that people know if they want Florida art. And of course I use that meta tag and I use that hashtag all the time so that people can find me. Um, this is my art show at the art festival. This first slide on the right is probably over 10, 15 years, 10 to years ago. I would guess, and it was a double tent. I don't know if you can see the two front awnings, but I would put up two tents because as people walked by, they would have a chance to see me better because it wasn't just a little 10 foot square, it was a 20 foot long walk they had to go. Maybe something would catch their eye better. And once I got them in the tent, you notice I had panels on the front. I like to make a walk through gallery and I just look in, but actually make them want to walk around to see what's in, the, in my little personal gallery at the art show festival so that it would entice them in. This is my gallery today, uh, actually yesterday at the Artie Girl on the left. What my, what my actual um, exhibit looked like. Uh, I do now I no longer do my own tents. This is my second time doing tents with events. It makes it much easier for anybody who wants to do a show to be able to do it because you don't have to put up a tent, take it down in bad weather. If the weather is bad, I get to just take down my paintings and drive away. I don't take down the tent in the weather. The, we the tents are, are well made and constructed. Uh, another great advantage, Artie Girl, let us, let us come in a, dent, a day earlier because we had tents for events set up, our tents and our, event, our tents were set up early and we could drive in very comfortably, put up our paints, not have to have a crowd of people, didn't have to do it in the middle of the night. I've gotten to wear all my shows that I do for art festivals 
are easy to get to within a three, four hour drive at the very most. I usually have clients in the town that I can stay with and enjoy their company. So I'm not lonely being by myself working. And I, I'm gonna be using tents for events so that it's a 30 minute setup instead of a three hour setup. It's a great way at shows to meet people, to get them to know you and who you are. It's one of the best ways to build a client list. I invite people to sign my uh, email book for e getting on my newsletter. And I tell them they'll get a special invitation to my home gallery show and they'll get to get uh, special offers on Fine Art America. It's a way to get in front of a whole lot of people in a one time. I don't have to be dealing with it every day, every week to having a show. I can just go for a weekend and meet 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people and not everybody's going to be my client, but the, the percentages work out very good. I now just yes. And we okay. don't forget we have a question and answer period that we need to make. Okay. I think this is my last slide. Okay, good. Okay, so right. so, but, so local festivals really help you build the list and create interest for you, and you start finding your client collector, your person, and that's it. Okay. So now I'm going to leave that and come back over and let's. I, I somehow my cursor is not cooperating with me. There it is. I found it good. So uh, stop share, right? Yep. There we go. So now I'm back. There we go. Right. <laughs> Very good. All three of you did a fantastic job. Now, uh, Jeffrey's going to conduct the uh, question and answer uh, portion. I know there are some chat questions. Yes, I have a couple. Uh, one may have already been answered, but this was from uh, Zink Anna Marie. Uh, how much is the application fee for Artful Home? This is for Nadine. Oh, am I unmuted? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. you are. Um, it's a one-time fee for being juried in, and at the time it was $300, which you could pay for over so much per month. Um, once that's paid for, and it's a decision I made recently, I went through a second juried process for my paintings because I felt comfortable with the site. So now I sell my paintings on the site as well. Once you're a juried in artist, the addition of other kind of work is acceptable without paying another entry fee. Um, so, and, and I should also mention, you control your own site. Every time you put a piece up on your site, it's being reviewed by somebody. It's not automatically accepted. Uh, and twice a year they run sales uh, and in, well, many more times than twice a year, but twice a year they, they run a sale where you may put up items and sell them at a sale price, but you may only use that vehicle. You may not put those up on your regular site so you don't compete with yourself. And they also run sales where they take, if there is a discount involved, they take the discount and you still get the full purchase price on your pieces. Um, I find them to be very, very fair. And I find that my work um, is distinctive enough, even though they have a lot of painters on the site. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention, for those of you who are interested in the vessels or the process of the vessels that the area two people did, I think it was the second one, Nancy, did a presentation on finding your niche. And I did a five minute presentation where I go through the whole process of how I go from a raw gourd from the pumpkin family to a finished piece of art. So if you're interested in that, that is available to you. Okay, Nadine, one more, I mean, uh, yeah, Nadine, one more question. Renee Lewis wondered, um, if they don't accept you, the artful poem, uh, is the jury fee still has to be paid, is that correct? Yes. If they don't accept you, you still have to pay it. To the best of my knowledge, I was accepted, <laughs> so I didn't walk down that street, but it's a good question to ask before yeah. you go forward on it. Right. Well, thank you for that. Um, Renee also wanted to ask uh, Lori. Um, she wondered if when you hang your artwork in the garage, are you concerned about humidity? I, I did. It, yeah, I, 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 was, I am unmuted. I totally insulated my garage. 
and I have not had any problems whatsoever. Very good. It doesn't look that hot in there. So yes, I insulated the ceilings and the walls of the garage when I built the garage. You could do that afterwards, just even the ceiling. It doesn't look that hot. It's been, it's been fine. Now I do have a um, air purifier that I put out with ozone and I put that in there and run that every so often that keeps any mold or anything, anything out too. And you can definitely run a humidifier if you wanted to. Well, thank you. That's something we have to be concerned about in Florida. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Anyone? I, I, I can ask a question maybe. I was interested in, I think she, is it Shop Vita that you were talking about when you were talking about the uh, other site that you work with that does the clothing and all? It's called um, Shop Vida, V-I-D-A. Okay. And if you want to see my work on there, you put my name into the search box because they've got a lot of yeah. artists okay. are doing that. This is not the only site that I know that does it. I was also approached from a site in Canada who also does that. But when I researched that site, it was the same principle. They do the manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Shop Vida also use it. I think they're located in San Francisco. Most of the manufacturing is out of the country. And part of their reputation is built on the fact that they use, they go to countries that are underdeveloped and try to support the economy of those sites, of those manufacturing sites. A downside is that it takes six to sometimes eight weeks to get a product because, and that's another thing that makes it difficult to mar market because it takes so long to get the, the piece that you've ordered. But uh, they, the printing is good and, and the styles that are on there are very usable and wearable. Although I have always chosen to do things that were more in the fashion as opposed to utilitarian end of the business. So, but you can make choices. You can choose whatever templates you wish to put your artwork on. And also there's no jeering on that at all. Once you're involved with them and they ask you to be a, a, uh, an artist, there's no cost, there's no jeering, but you don't get very much financially out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's helpful. Like it. Thank you. My pleasure. Okay. Um, here is a question. It says, "Can you give the site's name for Sharp Vita?" Oh, sure. It's. Um, I will read it. www. dot shop shop s h o p v i d a. dot com. And the other one is again www. dot Artful Home, A R T F U L H O M E dot com. Artful Home. Okay. Very good. Okay, here is one from Harriet. Uh, it says, I am new and this might be off topic, but how can you decide which route is best for you as an artist concerning galleries? Anyone want to jump in on that one? She asked, should we just jump in or asking any particular, particular artist? I guess well, since you're, I, since I, you're I, already I, there, go ahead. Okay, well, my opinion on that is you really have to, that's a matter of finding your client. You have to know who that person or that company is going to, is that would want your style work. So you have to do some research. And then with that research, you can decide what's going to work best for you. It's just like if you walk into a gallery, your work has to fit within that gallery. They, you don't want to be just like somebody else in the gallery. That doesn't make you a fit. You have to have the, the same basic quality of work and be something and offer something to that gallery. So even when I do an art festival, there's towns that are good for me to go to and towns that are terrible for me to go to. So you have to really evaluate your art and see where it fits and know what price range is gonna fit that particular community that you're gonna be presenting to. So, and it also depends on how much work you wanna do. 
Okay, you know, you might not, you might do a lot more work and get more reward rewards, and, and you don't do much work, you might get, you might still get some good rewards. But I find that uh, the art show circuit is is a lot of work, but it's, it's the rewards are good too. Grace, Nadine, you want to weigh in on that question? Yeah, I would. Um, the, and and this is kind of logical. I wouldn't approach the sites that I have that I am on, unless you're comfortable working with a computer. Uh, online site may, has the responsibility of what you deliver, the quality of the slides, uh, understanding what you they want to see is an important part of that. Um, in the Vitus site, the Shop Vitus site, I do all the sizing, the selection, placing it on the item. I mean, it's a, it's, it, it has a lot of computer aspects to it. Um, again, on Artful Home, you have to be able to manage your own site in terms of uploading your images, defining your images. Um, so I think a computer, having ex computer experience and photographic experience would be a requirement for those sites. Um, as opposed to, well, I also think you need it if you're going to show a portfolio, but specifically online sites, you would need those skills to pursue that. Okay, and may I say, if you're looking about going into a gallery, you're going to have to do your homework and visit the gallery. And like Lori and them have said, um, is your artwork going to fit in there? Um, you don't want to be like everybody else in the gallery, but at the same time, um, your style may be so completely different than what's in the galleries also that uh, it's not going to fit. Um, talk to some of the artists around, see where they're at and what experiences they've had with the galleries. Um, a lot of private galleries are wonderful and co-op galleries are great. Um, you're going to have to put a good portfolio together. And let me say something about portfolios that we've seen over the years never go into place and put every single piece of artwork that you've ever created into a portfolio. Um, a gallery wants to see that you're consistent uh, and that your artwork is, is there. Um, and it's better to go in with a smaller portfolio and a good one that shows your current work and what you're doing than everything that you've ever created. Um, and then, you know, by talking to some other people, you can find out the expenses involved, the time. Co-op galleries are going to require you to work and hold a job. But if you like being around people and meeting them, that's a great outlet. Uh, if you don't like to do this, then look at some of the private galleries. Okay, great. Uh, a question here is, has anyone had experience with Society6? Who asked that question? I guess not. Yeah. Who who was it that asked that question? Lynn. Uh, I can say that I, that I ch I checked them out a little bit, and and for me, I just felt like Fine Art America was was a better fit in, in so many different ways. So I think, you know, I think that I, I didn't, I didn't join them. I joined several other, there's, there's over a hundred, I've got a list of a hundred different, uh, you know, internet galleries that you can go on. And some of them do pretty well. There's so many chat rooms you can go into and find out and see if there's one in a chat room that you would like to do. The other thing is the home show uh, situation. It's kind of the, you know, if you re realize how well Tupperware has done for so long and all these other home shows, when, when you've been, you, if, if you're just starting out, you don't have too much, uh, you don't, you can't invest too much in it. There's nothing like a home show. Even if you just have a small living room, uh, invite your friends, invite your family, just get the experience of talking to people, showing your art and getting to know each other. That is a good start because it's the very bottom of the row road as far as no expense other than just some some snacks you're going to give out or whatever and you're getting it's like a party and your friends come and they want to support you and they're going to bring other friends i always tell friends to bring friends you have to come on over with and bring your neighbor and bring this person and that's not a, that's not scary but it teaches it starts to teach you how to do uh whether you're going to go in a gallery or an art festival whatever you're going to do without a lot of expense so it's just a thought 
Anybody else have something to ask? There's an awful lot of experience with these three ladies and a lot to share, and we appreciate it. Okay. All right, then, we'll, we'll have our closing moment. So on behalf of the Florida Artists Group, thank you for joining us for Do You Really Need a Gallery? We hope you've enjoyed this live presentation. A link to the video recording of this presentation will be sent to you in the next few days. At the end of the session, a short survey will be sent to you, and we hope that you will uh, fill it out and respond to it. This, uh, this concludes the video artist series as part of the flag Celebrate the Arts. We hope you've enjoyed these presentations and benefit from the content and the experiences of these artists. Thank you for supporting the Florida Artists Group and be sure to log in to um, the FLAG site to view the exhibition and uh, other presentations. All of the other presentations are on video and they are posted on the FLAG page. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you.